More shifting winds at the White House today on whether Russia's President Putin is a friend, a foe, or something else. Word came that President Trump wants Putin to visit this fall, even as Monday's summit sparked more questions. White House correspondent Yamiche Alcindor begins our coverage. For President Vladimir Putin, a warm reception from Russian lawmakers today as he celebrated the Helsinki summit results. Finally, the full formal meeting happened, which allowed me to talk directly to President Trump, and it was successful generally and led to useful arrangements. There's been no formal announcement of any deals the leaders may have made. Putin said they worked out a range of agreements involving international security. But today at an Aspen Institute forum, the U.S. Director of National Intelligence, Dan Coats, said he's not sure what was discussed. Well, you're right. I don't know what happened in that meeting, but that is the president's prerogative. Um, uh, if he had asked me uh, how that ought to uh, be conducted, I would have suggested a different way, uh, but that's not my role. This morning, President Trump tweeted saying, the summit with Russia was a great success, except with the real enemy of the people, the fake news media. He went on to say he looks forward to a second meeting with Putin so that we can start implementing some of the many things discussed, including cyber attacks, Ukraine, and Middle East peace, among others. But the overall U.S. commander for the Middle East, Army General Joseph Votel, said he has heard nothing about any changes regarding Syria, where both American and Russian forces are involved. He spoke to Pentagon reporters on a video link from his headquarters in Tampa. We have received no, uh, no further direction than we've currently been operating under. Direct collaboration with the Russian military would need congressional approval. There was more today, too, on the matter that's dogged President Trump since Helsinki, Russian cyber hacking in the 2016 U.S. election. The New York Times reported that two weeks before his inauguration, in January of 2017, he was shown highly classified evidence that Vladimir Putin personally ordered the campaign of cyber attacks and disinformation. Donald Trump. Just five days later, the then president-elect held a news conference. Today, he posted a clip from it. But later on in that same news conference, Thank he dismissed much, the intelligence community's conclusion that Putin had been trying to help him win the election. Do you accept that part of the finding? Well, if, if Putin likes Donald Trump, I consider that an asset, not a liability, because we have a horrible relationship with Russia. In Aspen, Colorado, the president's the Homeland update, Security Secretary, Kirsten Nielsen, said today like she's never seen evidence that Russia's election interference was aimed at securing a Trump victory. What we've seen on the foreign influence side is they were attempting to intervene and cause chaos on both sides. On Monday, the president seemed to take Putin's denials at face value. Intelligence Director Coates quickly challenged that, saying Russian interference did happen and it's continuing to happen. Today, Coates said he had had no choice. I was just doing my job. My thoughts there were that I uh, believed I needed to correct uh, the record uh, for that. Obviously, I wished he had made a different statement, uh, but I think that now that has uh, been uh, clarified. Just yesterday, Mr. Trump appeared to dismiss the notion that Russian interference is ongoing. Is Russia still targeting the U.S., Mr. President? Thank Press, you let's go. Time. Make your way out. No, you don't believe that to be the case? The White House later said Mr. Trump had been misunderstood. All of this has lawmakers on both sides asking questions and seeking action. Republican Senator Bob Corker chairs the Foreign Relations Committee. I just again feel sometimes that uh, the president conflates um, getting along with someone and, you know, flattery and those kinds of things, conflates that with the actual policies. In a statement today, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell announced he's directed two Senate committees to hold hearings on potentially strengthening U.S. sanctions against Russia. Maryland on the House side, Democratic the Whip Steny Hoyer of Maryland called for bipartisan legislation to increase funding for election system security and to counter Russian-led cyber attacks. The flashing red light calls us to action. Surely we can rise above pandering to party and Putin to act on behalf of our freedom and our security. The measure ultimately failed. Republicans voted against it, saying there's already ample money available for those purposes. 
And Yamish is here with me now, along with our foreign affairs correspondent, Nick Schifrin. Hello to both of you. So, Yamish, as you've just been reporting, we've seen over the last few days a number of statements the White House has made about the Russian threat, about what the Russians did in 2016. Then they've turned around and made a clarifying statement, or they've reversed themselves. How does the way the White House is handling this, because you've been looking into it, compare with the way the rest of the administration has been looking at all this? Well, President Trump's inability to definitively say that Vladimir Putin ordered Russian nationals to interfere in the 2016 election has put him at odds often with the U.S. intelligence community. Today in Aspen, Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats looked visibly surprised when, when NBC's Andrea Mitchell told him about Putin's upcoming visit. The White House has announced on Twitter that Vladimir Putin is coming to the White House in the fall. Say or that again. <laughs> <laughs> you, Vladimir Putin coming Did I to hear the, you? Did I hear you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be special. <laughs> wow. I mean, that really sums up where the national intelligence director and the president stand right now. He's, he was completely surprised, and he's not alone. The, the intelligence community is looking at what President Trump is doing and saying, and they're really questioning kind of why the president is saying all of these things, and they don't know what he said to Vladimir Putin in that one-on-one -on -one meeting that went on for two hours. And Dan Coats isn't the only person in the Trump administration that's pushing back on the way that Trump is talking about Russia. The director of the FBI, Christopher Wray, said that Russia is the most aggressive country that's attacked, that's trying to attack the U.S. right now, that's really, really important. And I was talking to sources today. There was a former Department of Homeland Security official who, who, who was very senior in a past administrations. He said that the, the Homeland Security's, um, the Secretary of Homeland Security today saying that she didn't know if Russia was trying to help Donald Trump shows that there are, that these administration officials are under a lot of pressure to, to pick between Donald Trump or the truth. Um, so that's really, really important. And the Senate today voted unanimously um, to, to, to oppose Russia talking to U.S. officials or U.S. Um, citizens and basically saying that the U that Russia should not be able to question American citizens. So they're over also coming out and saying we are not with the president on this one. So, Nick, you talk to folks in the intelligence community. There is some sort of division, it appears, between what the president's doing and what they know. I think it's important to note that they will continue doing their job despite that division. Uh, but that there is worry concern, even discomfort, with some of what the president is saying and some of the policies that he's exhibiting toward Russia and toward Vladimir Putin. We have to remember that since January 2017, the intelligence community has fingered Putin personally and said that President Putin ordered the hacking and the disinformation campaign in the United States. Uh, the president was given that information, as we learned today, from the New York Times with specific intelligence that there was human intelligence about President Vladimir Putin's order. And, and there is just bafflement, frankly, among some intelligence officials as to why the president will not back them up on that. And at least publicly, they just don't know why the president isn't backing them up. Two other things. Yamish, uh, this whole, uh, the White House yesterday saying uh, that the president was considering seriously this idea of swapping uh, interrogation between uh, the U.S., former U.S. ambassador to Moscow, among others, uh, with the U.S. being able to interview these, uh, these uh, intelligence folks in Russia who've been indicted by, uh, by, by the United States. So what, and then today they said, no, it's not being considered at all. The president doesn't like the idea. What's going on there? Well, the White House and the State Department had vastly different answers when it came to the question of whether or not Vladimir Putin could get his way and, nas and Russian national officials could sit down and interview American citizens that they see as criminals. Um, the U.S. intelligence community has, has found that these Americans are not criminals. They include the former ambassador to, to Russia, the former U.S. ambassador to Russia. Um, and there's this idea that, that Putin wanted to kind of float that out there and that it was pretty much seen as absurd. The State Department came out very forcefully yesterday and said that it's absurd to even ask this question, where Sarah Sanders kind of hedged it and said, well, we'll 
think about it. And then it took until today, which is a full 24 hours later, for the White House to come out and be on the same page as the State Department. So again, it comes back to that idea that I've been talking to sources about, where they say they don't know why the president is doing the things that he's doing. And people are very worried that he made maybe a deals with President Putin in that, in that two-hour meeting. They're not sure if maybe he gave him some sort of signal that there might be an insurance there. Um, so they're very, very much worried and, and don't know what to think. And just very quickly, Nick, on that point, it isn't clear what was said in that meeting. How much of a problem is that? It's a big problem because the Russians have a well-oiled diplomatic machine. Uh, and they will put forward their ambassador to the U.S., who briefed reporters yesterday. They put forward President Putin today, and they will fill the void uh, where there is no uh, statement from Secretary Pompeo about what was decided. There's no statement from the National Security Advisor, John Bolton. Uh, the Defense Secretary, Jim Mattis, wasn't even at the Cabinet meeting yesterday, whereas the Russians are absolutely organized. And so they will fill that void and try and shape the, the legacy of, of this summit uh, and certainly the day-to-day -day, uh, actions of both countries in the, in the near future. Nick Schifrin, Yamiche Alcindor, thank you both. Thank Thanks. you.